What's going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a simple paint clone in python and this is what we're going to end up with i have already coded this so we can look at the final result this is going to be a very simple canvas here that we can draw on we can increase the brush size we can decrease the brush size there you go we can clear the screen we can choose different colors from the color picker here so we can choose green for example we can choose red we can choose blue and once we're done with the whole artwork here yes that's what i would call an artwork uh we can either press save or we can try to close and then we're going to get a dialogue let's do the close thing uh we can it asks us do you want to save your work i can press yes and then it's going to ask me for a file name let's go with 123.png and then it's going to close the application and as you see there you go we have a png file on our desktop we can also choose a JPEG file. Let me just rerun the script here. And we can now draw something fancy here. Let's just increase the brush size a lot. And go with red, for example. There you go. And then we can just save this as 456.jpg. And there you go. As you can see, a JPEG file. And I can, of course, say cancel, so it doesn't close the application. If I say I don't want to save it, it's just going to close the application. So this is what we're going to build today. And for this, we're just going to need two modules. One of them is going to be a core Python module, so we don't even need to install it. And the other one is pillow, so you need to install pillow. And for that, you open up your command line or your terminal, whatever you're using, and you type pip or pip3, depending on which one you're using, and install pillow like that. So we're going to use pillow only for the export part. So if you just want to have the application, the graphical user interface and everything without the ability to save the final image, you don't need pillow. Pillow is what we're going to use for the export and TK inter is what we're going to use for the actual graphical user interface. So what we're going to say is from TK inter import everything because we're going to use a bunch of different GUI, GUI elements. Uh, we're going to also say import or actually we're going to do that later on. We're going to also use some dialogues, but we're going to import them when we need them. And we're going to import from pill image draw. Now we also need image from pill, but the problem is, and I'm not sure where it was exactly. Maybe it was with TK intern. Maybe it was with OpenCV. Uh, but sometimes there are some conflicts with the image. So you can also say from pill import uh, let me just go to the right position here. You can also say from pill import image and then image draw as well. But the problem is that image can be ambiguous because different libraries use the same image class. So sometimes when you then say image, it doesn't know are you actually talking about there you go, as you can see, it's talking about TK inter and not about pill dot image. So if you want to use image from pill, what you want to do is you want to import pill and then you can use image uh, by saying pill dot image. So besides that, what we're going to do is we're going to define some constants first. So we want to say the width and the height of the canvas is going to be 500 and 500. Then the center is going to be the width floor divided by two. So we have a whole number, an integer. And we're also going to define the color white to be 255, 255, 255, just an RGB value here. So for the actual graphical user interface, we're going to do a class, we're going to have a GUI class, because then we have all the objects, um, we have one centralized object where we can just access self dot and the individual elements. So we don't need to care about which function we define first, which uh, attribute and which widget we define first. So we're just going to do that in a GUI class class paint GUI. And I think we need one. Oh, what the hell happened there? We're going to need one extra line here. And we're going to start with the init method, it's just going to be a basic constructor. And we're going to start with the root window. So the root window is going to be TK with a capital T. And of course, we want to make that part of self. So self dot root is going to be TK self dot root dot title. Is going to be neural nine paint clone, uh, call it whatever you want, just 
not as cool, for example. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define some basic parameters. For example, the brush width is going to be by default, not parameters, by the way, attributes, sorry. Uh, it's going to be 15. And the default color, current color is going to be 000000. By the way, I have a plugin for highlighting the colors. If you want to have that plugin as well, you just go to PyCharm settings, um, then to plugins, and the plugin is called Color Highlighter. So you can install it in PyCharm if you are using PyCharm. If you are using Vim or um, VS Code, there are other plugins like that as well. So just look them up. Um, and then we're going to start with a canvas. So the canvas is just going to be CNV canvas, we are going to pass self dot root as the parent object here, the width of the canvas is going to be width minus 10. And height is going to be height minus 10. For the borders. There you go. And the background of the canvas is going to be white. As you can see, again, we have the, uh, the color preview then self dot canvas is going to be packed so that we can add it to the GUI. And what we're going to do is we're going to bind to the motion of the first mouse key. So the left mouse key being pressed and moved, we're going to bind that uh, that motion to a function that is going to draw on the canvas. So we're going to say self dot canvas dot bind. And we're going to pass the string b one dash motion like that. And this is going to be bound to the function self dot paint. And we don't have that function yet. So we're going to define it self paint. And we're going to just leave it empty. For now, we're going to add a pass here. Um, and this function is going to be triggered every time we press the left mouse button, and we move our mouse inside of the canvas. Every time we do that, we're going to call the paint function, and it's going to do what it's going to do. All right. So after that, we're going to also define the image that we're drawing itself. So self image is going to be pill dot image dot new RGB. And uh, then we're going to pass the width and the height of the image. And uh, we're going to pass the color white as the background. Um, then we're going to create a draw object. So draw is going to be image draw on the image. And we're going to use image draw to draw on the image and we're going to use the image cell for the export later on. There you go. So what's next, let me just look at the code here. Uh, next, we're going to define a button frame because you saw that we have the, the canvas and then we have the buttons below the canvas and those buttons are inside a button frame. So we're going to say self dot button frame is going to be a button or uh, actually just a frame. And this frame is going to be part of self dot root. And we're going to fill we're going to say self dot button frame dot pack and we're going to fill. We're going to set fill equal to x so that it stretches across the x axis. And inside of that button frame, we're now going to add all the different buttons for increasing the brush size, decreasing it for clearing for saving and so on. So what we're going to do first is we're going to say self dot button frame dot column configure and we're going to set zero weight equals one, we're going to copy that we're going to have three rows or three columns actually. Come on. There you go. And now we're going to add the buttons to that frame. So self dot let's start with a clear button is going to be a button, it's going to be part of the button frame. And the text is going to be clear. And every button can have a command and this command is going to just be a function. So we're going to say command equals self dot clear, but we don't have that clear function yet. So we're going to just go down here and say clear. And we're going to pass for now. So let's first finish the GUI. And then we're going to talk about these functions. Then we're going to say self dot clear button, we're going to grid that so it's going to be a grid structure here. And we're going to place that clear button at row one, and at column one. 
Actually, I think column needs to be written like that. And we're going to make it sticky so that it stretches to west and east, to left and right. So we're going to say sticky equals um, w plus e. This is not a string. Those are constants from the TK inter module. Uh, what do we have here? Is not callable. Why is that not? Oh, we need to say image draw dot draw. There you go. So we can copy that here. <clears throat> and we can create a bunch of more buttons. We want to have a uh, what's the next one want to have a save button. Save button. I'm going to change the text to save and the function obviously to save as well. And down here, we want to change it to uh, what's the next one want to have brush plus or let's call it B plus BTN and B plus BTN here as well. There you go. The function is going to be called brush plus and brush minus brush underscore plus. Uh, so let's copy that. Change that to minus BTN minus BTN. And we change that symbol to a minus and this year to a minus as well. And of course, all these functions need to be implemented. So we're going to define them down here. Save, I'm gonna pass brush plus there you go brush minus and one button is still missing and this button is the color picker so self dot change or let's just call it color btn is going to be button actually let's just copy that color btn color btn text is going to be change color. And the command is going to be change color. There you go. So now we only need to adjust these uh, row and column parameters here. We want to have uh, the save button in column two. want to have the brushes here in zero and zero. And we want to have or actually want to have them column zero, no row, row zero and row one in column zero and column zero. <clears throat> and the color button is right in the middle or actually how do we want to have it? We want to have uh, the brushes we want to have change color and clear. So we want to have clear in column one in row zero. Let's change that want to have the save button in or actually want to have the color button in row one, column one, I want to have the save button in column two, row one. Okay, that's fine. I think that should be fine. So change color needs to be defined as well. Def change color self pass. There you go. So at the end of that, of course, we need to also um, run the actual TK inter uh, main loop. So we need to say self dot root. But first of all, we're going to set a setting set self dot root dot protocol. We're going to say WM delete window. And we're going to call the function on closing, you can call this again, whatever you want. And we're going to define the function on closing. This just triggers that whenever we press the x symbol in the top right, we're going to call a function so that we can ask if the user wants to save uh, the artwork or not. So on closing self pass, there you go. And then self dot root dot attributes, we're going to say that we want this to open um, on top. So topmost is going to be true. You don't need that setting. If you think it's annoying, I just like it for the videos, and then self dot root dot main loop. 
There you go. So now I think even though the buttons don't have any functionality, we should be able to at least see the graphical user interface. Let's try it. Paint GUI. And let's run the script. There you go. As you can see, okay, maybe you want to have this at row zero. Um, doesn't work because if I now press on the canvas, you can see we get um, some errors. But you can see that the basic graphical user interface is here. So just to save button, we want to have it at row zero. So now if I run this, there you go. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to define the individual functions. Now the clear function is quite simple. So we're going to define that first, the clear function basically says, okay, self dot canvas, delete everything. We're going to delete everything from the canvas. Uh, and we're going to set the or actually, we don't need to do that because we don't change the background. So deleting it is everything we need to do. And then also, of course, don't forget that we have two things that we edit here, we have the actual canvas that we see while we draw, and then we have the actual image, whatever we do on a canvas, we also do in the image. So whatever we did on the canvas, we also did on the image, and we need to delete that as well. So we need to say, self dot draw dot rectangle, this is a uh, I don't know if that's the best practice way to do it. But what we're going to do is we're just gonna draw a white um, rectangle and fill it with white color to reset everything from zero, zero to 1000 1000, which is definitely enough. And then we're going to say fill equals white. I don't say that that's the best practice way to do it. But that's one way to do it. So this is how we clear everything. Now let's talk about the paint function itself, because that's where the action is happening. The paint function uh, is taking an event, <clears throat> sorry, as a parameter, and the event is the motion of the mouse. This event has coordinates, where is the mouse? What is it doing? So what we want to do is want to say x1 and y1 equals event dot x minus one, and event dot y minus one. And x2 is going to be x2 and y2 is going to be plus one. So this is basically so that we have a rectangle because we cannot just uh, we cannot just draw a rectangle at the same position. So this is the x and y coordinates of the rectangle. And now we're going to say self dot canvas dot rectangle. So this is on the we're actually draw rectangle, right? Self dot canvas draw rectangle. Uh, or actually, it's create rectangle, sorry, these functions definitions, I always, I always mix them up. So create rectangle, and what we provide is the coordinates. So x1, y1 to x2 and y2. Those are the corners, uh, we're going to outline with a certain color and the color that we're going to use for the rectangle for the outline of the rectangle is going to be the current color, which is self dot current color. And we're going to fill with a certain color, which is guess what self dot current color. And we're going to set the width to guess what self dot brush width. So all the parameters that we have. Um, what's the problem here? Okay, the lines too long, that doesn't really matter. And then Oh, sorry, I need to fix that alarm real quick. All right, sorry for that interruption, I had an alarm going on from my phone. Um, there you go. So this is the rectangle from the canvas. And now we need to do the same thing, the exact same thing that we do on a canvas, we want to do it on the image draw as well. So we want to say self dot draw dot rectangle. And here we pass again, x1, x2, uh, x1, y1, x2, uh, plus self dot brush width, and y2 plus self dot brush width. And this is how we do it here, we pass a list of the coordinates. And then of course, also the parameters outline and so on. So outline is going to be self dot current color and fill is going to be self dot current color as well. And I'm not sure if we need to have a width here. Yes, we need to have a width here as well. So the width is going to be self dot brush width. There you go. So by executing these two lines of code, we're actually drawing this is just getting from the event where is the mouse actually located? Because remember, we bound the motion of button one being pressed. Uh, so whenever we move that that triggers the event, which is bound to the canvas, which calls paint. 
So we pass the event and the event knows, okay, where is the mouse at the moment? And depending on that, we're going to take the action of creating a rectangle there on the canvas. And of course, doing it also in the image that we don't see that is uh, operating in the background. All right, so this is the basic paint function. I think we should actually be able to see that. There you go, we can already draw. And we should also be able to clear. As you can see, a big part of the paint application is already working. So let's do a very basic thing now and implement the brush sizes here. So the brush plus and the brush minus is actually quite simple. We just need to say self dot brush width is going to be plus equals one. And here we need to say if self dot brush width is larger than one, then we're going to decrease it by one, because we don't want to go to zero or negative numbers. Brush width minus equals one. There you go. Now, I think that's most of it. Did I forget anything? Oh, yeah, we need to have a color dialogue. And we need to also care about on closing. But the the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the safe, the safe is going to export the image that is created in the background. So again, we're drawing on the canvas, but we're also drawing on the image so that we can export it later on. And we're going to now implement the save function. And the save function is going to be using a file dialog. So before we do that, we need to import the file dialogs from TK inter and we're going to say actually, let me just see what the module is called from TK inter, we're going to import um, the file dialog. And we're also going to import now the message box and we're going to import the color chooser. Those are the three dialogs that we're going to need here. Um, and for the saving, we're going to say file name equals. And we're going to say file dialog dot ask save as file name. And here we can pass a bunch of options and the options are going to be the initial file. Um, so the initial file is going to be in my case, untitled dot PNG. Then we're going to specify the default extension. Default extension, come on, it's going to be PNG as well. And then we can also specify the file types that are available. And here you can choose whatever you want. So you can say file types equals and you need to pass a list. Uh, and inside of that list, you have two tuples. So you have this and this. And here we have the uh, the name so PNG, for example, and we have JPEG. And here we have the endings, the extensions, so dot PNG and dot JPEG. Now, actually, you can pass everything here that pillow supports. So you can also try different uh, formats. But this is what we're going to do now PNG and JPEG. And that's actually it. Now, as a result of that, what this is going to do is it's going to open um, <clears throat> it's going to open the file dialog, then we're going to choose a path. And as a return value, we're going to get the path to that file. So all we need to do now is if the file name is not empty, if file name is not empty like that, then we're going to say self dot image dot safe to that file name. And I'm not sure why PyCharm is so stupid with the indentation at the moment. I think maybe I didn't close a bracket. What's the problem here? Let's just see. Come on. Let's see what's the problem. Actually should be fine now, right? There you go. Okay. So we're basically saying get the file name that you want, choose the extension that you want. And then once you're done, if you chose anything, because if we click on cancel, it's going to have an empty file name. If the file name is not empty, we're going to save the image. Otherwise, we're just going to not save the image. So let's see if that works. I think this should already work. If I now click on save, test.png. Let's see if this produces an image. There you go. We already have the image. 
So our application is almost done. We only need to care about the colors and about the closing dialogue. And the colors is actually not uh, the color choosing is not too difficult. We just need to call the um, the respective dialogue. So we need to say uh, color chooser dot ask color. And the title of this is going to be I don't know, choose a color. And this is going to give us two return values. The first value is not important to us because it's going to be the RGB uh, color value. And the second one is going to be the hex value that we can work with. So we're going to say underscore and then um, self dot current color, and then we're going to set that to the result. So if you want to see what this produces, we can also print color dot ask, or actually color chooser dot ask color. And we will not provide a title. So we can comment that out and I can show you what this actually does. There you go. Let's pick this one here. You can see that we get first of all the RGB values and then also the hex value and we want to have only the hex value. So we just get that. So that's basically it. And for the closing part, we also want to have a message box that asks, do you really want to quit? Or do you want to save your work before you quit? And if the answer is yes, then we're going to save the work. Otherwise, we're just going to do nothing. So the answer is going to be message box dot ask yes, no cancel. So we have three options. The title is going to be quit. And the message is do you want to save your work? And the parent of that message box is going to be self dot root. And the answer can now be either uh, true, false or none. So if the answer is not none, so if the answer is not cancel, then we're going to say if the answer is true. So if answer, then we're just going to say self dot safe. Otherwise, we're just going to say self dot or where we're always going to say self dot root dot destroy. And we're always going to say exit zero. But if we don't have answer equals uh, true, so if the answer is no, we're just going to going to destroy immediately. And if the answer is yes, we're going to also save the work. So I think that's actually it. So we are done. Let's see if it works. We can draw we can change the colors we can increase the brush size, we cannot go into the negative. So if I press this a bunch of times, I should not be able to go below one. There you go. And I can also save this. I can also cancel this. And I can press on X, I can say cancel and I can press on X say yes. And it would save it as one, two, three, and I can also use JPEG. Oh, I use JPEG twice. So maybe I should change that. But there you go, it's saved. We just need to fix that mistake. I provided JPEG twice. Where is it? Safe. There you go. It was PNG and dot PNG and then JPEG and dot JPEG. I just messed up the order there. So this is how you build a simple paint clone in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.